It's time to set our sights on a new target. Here's your look at the new Hyatt Toys Predator 2 Exquisite Mini for Predator. Exquisite Mini is the new stand series for 118th scale, super articulated action figures from Hyatt Toys. Those who follow the drill on this channel, thank you for that. We're going to first figure out, as we always do, how tall the Boar Predator stands, taking the Ultra Mesotron 5000, putting it to the very top of its head, and stop it right there. The Boar Predator is at a very impressive for its size, 4.6 inches in height, which works out in centimeters. Let me go ahead and do that right now for you. 11.7 centimeters tall is the Boar Predator. This boar predator is considerably blessed with accessories, but before we do that, let's have a look at the pamphlet here. Feast your eyes, friends and colleagues, at the exquisite mini Predator 2 lineup from Hyatt Toys. There's the City Hunter, the Guardian Predator, the Shadow Predator, Boar Predator, Warrior Predator, Elder Predator, and then on the other side, Stalker, Lost, Shaman, and Scout course adding predator to the very end of that I just didn't want to add that every single time follow Haya toys over on twitter and facebook my friends my colleagues at twitter.com forward slash Haya toys facebook.com forward slash Haya toys Haya toys by the way h-i-y-y-a-t-o-y-s that's Haya toys you can also check out their website www.hiatoys.com so let's talk about its accessories. Let's talk about its accessories. He comes included with the same display base that we've seen with all the other Predator figures. Same terrain, kind of a dirtied brown terrain here. Very heavily textured. I'm digging the look and vibe of this. Has a nice feel to it as well. This makes a nice little sound. ASMR, ASMR, ASMR. There is also little slotted points on the underside here. Don't worry, we're not gonna do ASMR videos. Uh, we're gonna put that on the underside right there, like so. They sit a sorta little loose until you connect it to other figures. I'll show you guys this in a second, but first I wanna show you how these connect in place. It's a pretty much simple peg to hold, peg to hole scenario. Although I do find that the peg sits slightly larger I've said that already, and I'll say it likely again in this video, but it does sit slightly larger, see I told you I would do that, than the actual hole of the Predator. I guess it guarantees you that the Predator isn't going to be going anywhere, but by the same trade-off though, it is an awfully fickled system of trying to twist, turn, and force in the peg into that little small hole there, till eventually you get the Predator in place. While we're also getting this guy in place. Why don't we actually bring in a couple of comparisons, shall we? There's the Elder Predator. And we just recently had a look at, there's the Warrior Predator. He's kind of sitting in the background there because he's going to start moving all these accessories out of the way. There's the three figures that we have had a look at. Oh, hold on, hold on. Two figures that we've had a look at, Devil Horns, and the one in the middle we have yet to look at, the Boar Predator. You can see that while they do share similar, similar components to them, they are very drastically different from one another, at least from a paint standpoint and paint standpoint alone, each are all different from one another. And then again, if you want to connect these two, I'm not literally going to connect them all together, but you can connect them either from the sides, from the front, from the back, depending on how you want to display the figures. I might when it comes to displaying these, I think I might just gonna leave the pegs off altogether. These little eye pegs do come in handy for connecting everything and getting everything like one consistent choo-choo train of collecting. But I think ultimately I'm just gonna display the figures as you see on their own. It just is a nice little space, little gap space in between each one of them. That's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and move these figures out of the way because we've already had a look at those. And we are going to resume this review by having a look at all the accessories that this guy comes included. Now the thing is though, like I said, this one was blessed considerably 
with a vast amount of accessories. Actually, all of the accessories, how many more times is he going to say that, carried over from the figures we've already had a look at. Case in point, there it is right there, thank you for focusing camera, does come with the smart disc. The same smart disc that came included with the boar predator, or the, we are looking at the boar predator, the warrior predator. Although if you look at the two, one does look like it's slightly lighter, a little bit more gray, if you will. This one now comparing the two, which I didn't actually notice before, that little purple tint that was featured on the Warrior Predator seems to have made its way also to the little smart disc. Whereas the one that came included with Boar Predator that we are looking at right now is more silver. Contrast of colors. Uh, you can take it. I'm just going to move its arm out of the way for the time being. You can take it and it pegs into place. It's more just luck, lady luck working in your favor than anything else. It does stay in place. That's not 100% fair. It stays in place. Banging it periodically, it will fall out. Just the luck of the draw, if anything, that you manage to get it in place and stay it in place. Next, moving along, something else that has made its way, its appearances, into previous reviews. Remember this one? This was the telescoping spear, the combi stick, if you will. This one also made an appearance with the Elder Predator. Again, a slight color variation. Elder's combi stick was a little bit closer to me, more like golds, a lot more browns. This one here, again, this one on this side, a little bit more to silver liking. Here you can see it's the exact same, exact same combi stick. Uh, and then the other thing that this one comes included with is the retracted combi stick, which also came included with the Warrior Predator. And where did I put... Oh, actually, right, yes, I had it in, in the hand of the Warrior Predator. There's the two side by side. There you go. You can see, again, the coloring does vary a little bit from one to the other. This one's got much more dark-rooted, almost pewter colors working for it versus the coloring here, this kind of purplish... Slight brown tinted silver. Looks like it is making use of the exact same mold. One also thing too is holding it the way that I am. I'm making these little pricky marks in my fingers. Don't worry, they'll heal. I'm not Wolverine, but there you go. Perfectly fine. So those are the accessories. And of course, you can't have a predator without some fanning hands. Dynamic poses are all the, all the craze now going around. Fanned hands. Certainly when it comes to posing and unique dis, you know, displaying options, I do like the fact that you can include, or they include, fanned hands. Um, there's the back sides of the hands. And just to do a comparison, it does look like they are different from the Elder's hands. Let's, have, let's compare it to the Warrior's hands. The Warrior's hands look like they could be identical, just a different paint variation. Similar hands, different paint. To change out the hands, let's just grab these accessories and move these out of the way because I'm sure I'm going to, I want to drop them. That would really suck. I'm going to go ahead and take the hand out. One thing omitted here on the boar predator. Let's grab the proper hands now, shall we? Where did I put the proper hand? There's, there's a proper hand. One thing that's probably apparent as I peg this into place, there we go, is that the boar predator doesn't come included with the little bladed gauntlet. This one is completely missing. This one is omitted. I'm going to take the display stand off as well. This one is missing the gauntlet, the blades. It's also missing a plasma caster. It's gone from this figure. There's not even the indication in armor where a plasma caster could reside. He's completely bare on the back. Nothing visibly there, obviously. This one is really scaled down for his armor placement. In fact, looking at it, only on his shoulders, only on his gaunt gauntlets on his arms, and only on his legs and knees is there armor on this guy. What is instead swapped out is almost like a leather, almost front sash or top, in which you can see has been adorned with the smaller skulls of these creatures. It's got some nice dark, almost dark chocolate colored brown paint added in there with the outer edge done in a lighter shade of chocolate brown. I gotta stop talking about chocolate. Head sculpt I quite adore. My intent was not honestly to look at the Boar Predator as the final review, 
but ultimately that's what I ended up doing. I looked at the Elder first, and then of course the Warrior Predator, but single-handedly, by no intent of my own, I'm ultimately looking at my favorite Predator from the three that we've had a look at. I love the shape of the head. It reminds me of a thorax of an insect. I also quite, quite like the sloped nature. It almost kind of looks like a cow catcher on the front of a train. This very, very much sloped front profile here of the helmet. The helmet also stretches further back, similar actually to the Warrior Predator, which we can bring in once again. Let's just tilt his head. I was getting so caught up with posing these guys. There's the two head sculpts. Initially, I almost looked at the two and thought that they were using similar head sculpts. Clearly, that's not the case. Clearly, the Warrior Predator has a much wider profile than the Boar Predator, who, instead of having a wider profile, trades it off for a longer stretched helmet. The gold looks excellent on this one. Not simply just a case where it's been striped across the top by paint. Instead, this one gets treated to a full sculpted helmet, where you can see like the recessed areas of this almost like beehive thorax. It's, it's a wondrous sight. Again, I love the head sculpt. The head sculpt looks rooted a little bit more like a classic jungle hunter predator, of course, except for the front that except for the front the fact that the front slopes as far forward as it does. And of course, this is nowhere close to looking like the Jungle Hunter. Long Dreads is still a trademark site for a Predator, and this one gets them as well. Slightly softer plastic, as with all the other Predator figures, we're all exhibiting this softer plastic. The helmet is not removable, from what I can see. It does not look like, even though it does give you the indication that there's a separation there, that's a separation that even a lawyer wouldn't be able to see out when you cannot remove it. You cannot divorce the helmet from the head that's underneath there. This one's got glorious coloring. Like I didn't already love the designs of this one already. I love the fact that it's got these brown, darker colors of brown that have been added into it. I don't know why looking at it, and this is such the strangest uh, comparison to be making, but when I look at it, I look. I feel like I'm looking at a G.I. Joe. I mean, scale-wise, it would obviously look, and you could almost imagine why somebody would make that assumption, but like the lower half looks like something like a Dreadnought. I don't know why. I look at it, and I'm thinking Dreadnought. Love the little piercings. Now, I don't know if this is actually spots on its skin. I would imagine it probably be the case. This is the coloring up here for its actual predator skin. So I'm wondering if these are actually not quite pants, but something it's wearing over top of it, where these are ripped away areas to the fabric in which now you see the skin underneath. Not unless he's got a darker lower half than he does on the top half of him, because it seems like everywhere else, I guess that's not 100% true. He does have, of course, a dark coloring on the back, the dark arms, the shoulders from the front also exhibit that same dark brown. It's kind of like a coffee brown. Here I am using foods to describe my colors. Glorious, glorious color. Can you tell how much I'm enjoying this figure? Nothing really I would actually fix about this figure. Of course, the big problems, smaller, smaller problems, even smaller than a three and three quarter inch sized problem. The feet, the feet pegs are too small. Uh, it does does require a whole lot of stressing and twisting to get it onto the de the desired display base. I mean, but that's small. I mean, that's that small of a problem. Of course, the smart disc fits very snugly, then falls out, so it's not 100% snug, but does fit well into the holster. Just don't bang it. It does fall out. Even just with a little, whew, it could knock that out but it does stay snug enough uh, that if you have it on display and providing you don't move it around too much it probably should stay quite easily in place yeah there's not really anything i would fix to this figure i mean loving the other figures already this is clearly my favorite of the three let me know down below what your favorite is of the three figures we had a look at. Okay, so let's go through its posability. I can't get so lost up in like looking at the how cool it looks that I feel like I'm 
slacking in my res reviewing responsibilities here. So it's posability, his head rotates all the way around, mindful of course that you don't get the hairs caught when you are turning the head around. Once again, I wanna just point out to the fact that it does look like it's got two ball joints, one ball joint right there, right where my finger is, sorry, 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 can't see, right where my finger was, and right up at the top there, right sitting into the cavity of the head. So you got one there, and then you got one in the neck. Between those two, they work as a happy couple, ensuring that the head poses in any which way that you want. The shoulders hinge out, and really, being that this one doesn't have the plasma caster, you can move the arms up a little bit higher, but you're still gonna run the risk that these shoulder plates, part of its limited armor, still sort of get in the way. You can move the arms up as much as you want to about there, and then no more. But at least you get this much of a range happening from here to up here. The hands rotate all the way around. Does have a swivel happening right in basically the bicep area. This connects to the shoulder just via a peg. And along that peg is where you can rotate the bicep. That's action figure science. Single hinge on the elbow. Uh, the gauntlet rotates quite freely, and the hands also equally rotate quite freely. It has an upper torso ball joint. It has nothing in the lower waist, nothing at all. Legs split to about, to about there. Forward and back. Of course, it's got that swivel. Of course, it has to have that swivel happening right at the top cut of the thigh. It has a double hinge on the knee. You can sort of see where the paint gets omitted unfortunately, right where the hinge is happening. But I mean, being that most, if not all the time that you're gonna be displaying the figure, you're likely, or at least for me, likely to have the legs straight. So I'm not gonna see the fact that the paint didn't make its way all the way through, all the way down. The gauntlets in the legs, the shin guards, if you will, do not rotate. However, the feet rotate quite freely all the way around. And even though it is very, very hard to see, there is a hinge happening behind the scenes, right in there. The hinge allows the legs, or at least the feet, to move slightly up and down. Not really all that much, though. I suppose they could have swapped that out for a ball joint. Sometimes ball joints can be a little problematic because ball joints, uh, especially in feet, I find sometimes can get a little loose. Um, they opted instead to give us sort of a hinge joint, something that swivels back and forth. There is still a peg that's sitting in the rooted areas, the cavity area, of the lower leg, and that hinge then rotates on that. I guess it's the most secure placement for where you can display and have the figure's feet standing. By the way, the figure does stand relatively well. Early on, when I was having a look at some of these figures, like for example, the Elder I found had some tricky difficulty standing upright. I guess it's just a case of just adjusting, tweaking the legs, moving the legs in the desired placement so the figure finally stands. And speaking of standing, there's a segue for you. You can of course make use of this cool display stand as well, even though it is tricky at times to get the figure planted on top of that very large peg sitting on top. By far my favorite figure from the three figures that we had a look at in the recent outings of Haya Toys is the exquisite, you'll see what I did there, the exquisite Predator 2 Boar Predator, by far my favorite. It's got this awesome color palette to it. Best described as kind of like a mocha coffee brown mixing medleys with a otherwise cream color that we normally expect to see on a lot of the Predator figures. The color palette is fantastic on this guy. It's got some depth to it that the other two Predators, and no fault to the other two Predators, but they just sim simply didn't have. Not to mention, Boar Predator has an awesome looking head sculpt. That helmet is by far one of my favorites that I've seen on not only Haya's releases, but some of the other Predator figures that I've reviewed on this channel. By far, Boar Predator probably has one of my favorite head sculpts, helmets that is. That additional metallic gold that they added into those little opened areas, not quite wounds, but almost the open wounds to his helmet, peeking their way out, so that metallic gold only adds to an icing on an otherwise fantastically delicious cake. G reviewer, tell us what you really think. 
This one also gets a fair share of accessories, some of which, most of which, we've seen with the other outings from the two figures that we just recently looked at. Even though it doesn't come with the flintlock pistol and it doesn't come with the sword, it comes with pretty much everything else that the other two figures had combined. That packed into a smaller three and three quarter, although it's closer to be about a five inch tall figure when it's all said and done, I think it was about four, four and a half inches in height. Super poseable, super detailed, and comes with a display stand, which sadly I have to admit is tricky to get the figure to stand on top of, but once you do get it in place, the world is your oyster. I don't really know what that means, but you can display the figure any which way that you want. I just ultimately displayed him because I wanted to have the spear in his hand. Just give him sort of a cool looking pose. Hopefully it's been successful, but at least I have something to work with, with a fantastic outing from Haya Toys. Not maybe everyone's cup of tea, Three and three quarter inch, or as I mentioned, about four and a half inch tall figure, could be a deal breaker for some of the figures collectors out there that generally like to gravitate towards seven inch tall figures. To you seven inch tall figure collectors, hold the phone, maybe just check out these videos again, and see if really you'll wanna stick with seven inches for your entire collecting days. Move maybe towards the scope of a four inch tall figure and you'd be surprised the kind of possibilities that you have at your disposal, especially for the fact if you don't have a lot of space to work with. Hyatt Toys is ideal because it gives you smaller scale figures, just as detailed, just as poseable as seven inch, just a little bit smaller and that's okay. Today we were having a look at the new Hyatt Toys Predator 2 Exquisite Mini. This was the Boar Predator. And as you probably guessed it, this guy quite likes and likes of probably of all the three figures that we've looked at. If you guys, if this is your first time having a look at the Hyatt Toys figures on this channel, thinking to yourself, gee, I wish he could have covered more of these. Oh, I have. I have. Feel free to go back to my Hyatt Toys playlist and you can check out the previous outings that I had a look at on this channel when we first had a look at Hyatt Toy figures. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.